Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, today we are gathering here to celebrate our gorgeous, uh, the, the glorious life of Fred Martin and his contribution to the art and the education. And Fred was an outstanding painter and also professor and scholar who worked at the San Francisco Art Institute for more than 50 years. Mm. During that year, she serves as vice president and dean of academic affairs for 20 years. He was a renowned painter, art critique, and art educator in the United States. And was also one of the important figures in American modernist abstract painting. In his whole life, he enjoyed teaching art until he was 90 years old. I knew Fred back to 1986 when he first took a group of artists to China. No, I should go to the next pages. It didn't work. Yes, I use them. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. I knew Fred when he was 1986 when he took the SFI group of students and the faculty to first visit China Academy when I was at school. That's the school I came from. And uh, I took him traveling around China. And first we planned to go to Tibet because of uh, we didn't get the pass. We got a special visa for Tibet. So that's why we changed the plan to go to other places. And during the trip, I started to know Fred. And he was a wonderful person, very nice personality, very scholar. So from the trip, we know each other. And uh, in, the, in the next 30 or to 40 years. So also I went after I came to the United States. I first came to the United States was uh, 1986, which is December 30th. It was almost the two days before the end of the year. Then I also studied at the SFI for my MFA degree. And uh, so Fred not only is an artist, but also he dedicated his life to art education uh, this, this to SFI, as well as to China. After his trip, first trip to come to China, then he first set up the school exchange program with China Academy of Arts and other art school in China. So from there, both Right. Well, uh, happy trails, and I'll send you a letter. The U.S. will be able to okay. visit okay. or have a workshop and teaching together. This was the 1988. Fred went to China Academy, give a demo lecture to the student and faculty, and he was so welcome <laughs> at the time. And you can see the students were so enthusiastic and also so warmly or oh, eager to see what's the uh, the art or demonstration or lecture or uh, technique from the West. And when China just opened to the world, not too far along. Besides Hangzhou China Academy, also he went to Shanghai Academy of Arts and also did the same thing in Shanghai. At that time, it, the way he did the abstract art was a very brand new to Chinese artists and the students, I believe. And he always surrounded with uh, those uh, curious students and give them, you know, wonderful, and I'll give them a uh, lot of uh, curious questions uh, regarding Western art. And Fred was uh, so patient and to uh, explain and also even to instruct them what's happening and what his experience as well. Fred is a great artist. He received so many awards in America. You know, from his uh, resume, you can see he received lots of awards. He received uh, um, uh, a 193 annual National Academy Prize in New York, okay? Plus all kind of uh, 
uh, uh, words. So those ones are just a very few of them. So I will not read it, but you can see it. And his life, four of the bright lights of the art contribution he made. Fred his education when he was a student and uh, from 1949 to 1953 at Berkeley, you know, UC Berkeley. At that time, he told me that one day his professor gave him a book of Lao Tzu, which is a Chinese philosopher's book. And then from there, he started interested in Chinese uh, Confucius and Lao Tzu's, uh, you know. Uh, uh, uh. And also he um, talked about his life influenced by the Chinese culture and also philosophy. But also he talked about his experience with his master teachers, uh, uh, Mark Roscoe, and, uh, and as well as David Park and Clifford Steele. Here's a video that shows about his, uh, his experience uh, when he was a student and, uh, and he took the summer class with uh, Mark Roscoe. Let's see when how- When I was a student, I had a teacher named Okay, that was a very short well, part of a talking his work and two. Okay, let's see. Well, I was a I'm sorry. Well, I was a student. Okay. Uh, because he finished his uh, 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 Jeremy Morgan, David Fraser, and all, and, and me and other friends of China, we went to Confucius' home with, uh, in, in Shandong province. And uh, to realize his dream, he always want to go to see what is the Confucius' home look like. That's the day we made the trip. Oh, sorry. Now back to 1986, when I took him to around China, and we took the, uh, we went to, instead of Tibet, we went to Guangxi province and there was a minority tribes over there and the beautiful scenery behind it. And also we, we, we visit a lot of places, you know, around the trip. And Fred liked to sketch everywhere when he sees something he like, and he liked to write down something he wanted. And also he has a habit to write it daily. Okay, his daily, it's a very special. I can show you what's daily look like. His daily is combining his writing, drawing, painting, collage, everything about the day experience he had at that time. And uh, you, when you look at his daily book, and also each page is look like a piece of art and very impression. And he wrote down everything in his mind and also collage and put on everything he collected and painted on everything from his mood. So he donated two of the book, daily book he had in China to China Academy when he was 90 years old. These are just part of it. Fred also had a lots of show in China besides the American. And also back to 1988, he started to have a solo show in China Academy of Art and as well as Shanghai Academy of Arts. And uh, 
Here is the opening in the Shanghai Academy of Arts. That's the opening date. It was warmly welcomed by Chinese scholar and student faculty. And he was so happy at that time. You can see his face. And, and also he was hosted by lots of good friends, including the former president of Shanghai Academy of Arts, Wang Dawei, on the left, on the left, second, second uh, right too. Unfortunately, he will not be able to get on the line, otherwise he will give a speech. And he likes to give a, 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 a answer the question to the, all those visitors from in front of his work. That's his show in Shanghai. Also, I know Fred, you know, so a lot, you know, always join the Fred's, you know, so family, you know, events. This is the Fred in 1983 Fred wedding party in Oakland. And then on the left is his wife, Stephanie, a lovely, you know, a lady. And also I knew him also on the first trip when Fred took him in 1986 to China with his son and a daughter. And he used the Chinese double happiness as a decoration for the wedding home. And you can see how he, he was happy at that time. And me and other friends like Jeremy, and we all went this event. Very lovely couples at that time. I was lucky I had a camera at that time to, you know, you can see uh, Jeremy on the on the right picture, you know, was very handsome at the time. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was so young, you know, naive, it looked like another person. So I found those historical photo, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. You can see that lots of uh, SFI uh, faculty and uh, and uh, and the students there, including the president, Bill Books, were next to me on the uh, Fred has lots of friend, uh, friends in China, you know, back to 1980s. So he went to China very often, almost every year, a couple of years, you know. So every time he met our friends over there, this is back to 1988. The Fred was in Shanghai. I put a two picture here. You can see what's the difference in Shanghai nowadays to the years when Fred was there. So when Fred was there, you can see only the TV towers are lonely behind him. Now, if we go to Shanghai, around the TV tower, four of the high sky buildings. So it's very different. And we went to China uh, many times. We had a show together. And uh, this was in the 19, 2008, in the Olympic year, we went to China. I think uh, the, 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 the person take a photo for us is funny why he's here right now. <laughs> behind him. And we went to Hangzhou also, and uh, boating on the lake, a beautiful Western lake. And Jeremy and I, we all joined the lake at that time. And that was a favorite place for, for all of us to go. Um, we also had a very uh, a, a big show, uh, which is uh, uh, coaching around the China. It's called No Room for Form, and a contemporary opinion from American artists, and uh, curated by uh, 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 former uh, curated by the Dr. Roger Mandel, who was the uh, deputy director of National Gallery, and also he was an art consultant for the uh, previous president, uh, Reagan Rui, and, uh, and Bill Clinton as well. And he was now our uh, curator. And later on, also Professor Shen Kui Yi also joined the curating team. So that's the first one we show in Beijing. And also we showed the same place, no room in full form in many places in China. Uh, you can see this is in the Bay Area, actually. We had to show, bring the show back here in 19, uh, 2015. Four of us, David Fraser, and a professor at the uh, Rhode Island School of Design, and Jeremy Morgan, professor at the SFI, me and our uh, Fred. So four of us, so had this show in many places since then. Fred also was a very nicely donated painting to different art schools. So this is the one he donated to San, uh, China Academy of Arts. And uh, on the left, the president of Xijiang and take over the gifts. He also followed us with uh, visiting the Xianxia Academy of Fine Arts when Jeremy Morgan uh, delivered a lecture, demo lecture, and he gave the lecture, uh, give the painting to the school as well. Uh, Fred was there. Fred in front of his work. We had a big show in Shandong Art Museum. It's the same thing, the first uh, no room for form in China. So supported by 
Chinese uh, cultural ministry, as well as uh, Shandong province uh, local government. So I had a huge opening at that time. And Professor Wang Dawei, the president of Shanghai Academy came for the opening. Fred wear the scarf, which is special for her for his work. And also he received a guest professor uh, from Santo Normal Muse, uh, University at the same time when we had an exhibition over there. Then the show was moved to China Academy of Art Museum. And uh, President Xu Jiang also hosted and uh, we'll get a big show over there. So four of us had a lot of a show since 2014. That was in the Central Academy. In 2018, when China Academy had its 90 years anniversary, he had a big event at the San Francisco Art Institute. So then on the opening, and Fred did a very uh, move for an uh, impressionist, uh, impre in impressive speech. And at that time, he was almost, uh, you know, cannot stand so well. So we have to hold him. Fred is very diligent until he's very elderly. He still painted every day at home and I keep writing as well. He's an art critique. He always give a lecture, always a write article for the, for the magazines. He, he used to be a, 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 a editor and a writer for uh, Bay Area is called Art Weekly. And he likes art. He likes to visit the studios in France. That's a German studio. And also San Francisco Cultural Council, okay, from Chinese consulate, um, Dr. Zai Dr. Yu, and also visit his home. And uh, on behalf of the Chinese government, give, his, uh, give him a, a, a very nice uh, uh, gifts. That was uh, back to uh, about two years ago, three, four years ago, when he was uh, still retired at home. Well, when he was 94 years old, he had a birthday at my home with uh, Michael Grady and he's a former, you know, colleague and came and we had a pretty warm dinner together. Just a, when Fred was sick, he's still very, you know, optimistic and also he likes to talk, we'd like to ask to visit him. You know, so we have a very good memory about his last period of his life. And he's, uh, this is the last trip he went out of the home before he passed away. He came to here in this room where you're sitting here to visit the show with the Jeremy and I to show. And he insisted on to come here. He called me, he said, I would like to come. And I said, no, you are tube feeding already. No, we don't want you to get the risk for that. And he insists on, he asked his friend to drive him to here and to see the show. That's his last trip out of the door before he passed away. So you can see it was so nice. That was the last trip I went to see him a couple of weeks before he passed away. When I saw him, he still bring, still reading a Paul Cezanne's book. He loves art, he loves things education for whole his life. We'll remember him. Thank you.